Yo, yo, people and patrons of the night, it is your boy, BD, and I am the host of the Horror Tavern, a one-stop shop of all things horror. So if you're here, make sure that you take a seat, you grab a drink, because we're going to be once again exploring the limitless cavern that is the horror genre. But today is a special video. Today is a celebration video, because my channel, the Horror Tavern, just last night has surpassed 300 subscribers. Bow, 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 bow. Clap it up, ladies and gentlemen. Clap it up. We've surpassed the 300 subscriber milestone. So I just want to give a thanks out there. I've done many thanks, but thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Thank you so much to everybody who subscribed, liked, commented on my videos, supported me throughout the year or so that my channel's been up. Um, I really appreciate it. This channel's undergone some change. I've expanded my content and the stuff I do, and you guys have been really receptive of that. So I appreciate it. I love each and every single one of you. Um, I could give a shout out to all my reviewer friends, some of the people that I know, but I've shouted you guys out a bunch of times. You know who you are, and you know how important you are to my life. And uh, that's all I have for it. just the brief thank you to achieving this milestone. This celebration video that I'm doing today is going to be a Goosebumps. That's right, we're returning back to my origins, which is why I got the bright green on. Goosebumps Series 2000 cover ranking. I'm going to be ranking all 25 books on their covers. It's really 24 covers because two of the books, as many of you may know, actually make up one cover. So 24 different covers that I'm going to be ranking. This is one of the most subjective rankings a person could do because it's literally just based off of covers. It's what you find visually appealing. I'm only going to give brief points. I'm not going to go too deep into it because it's basically either I like it or I don't like it. The one thing I'll say, though, is Series 2000 has... No flat out bad covers. There's only a couple of okay, decent ones. The one at the bottom is the only one I consider. I'm sorry, I gotta, still got that cough going on. There's the only one I consider a little bit bad, but the rest of them are okay, decent. They're just good, very good, and then fantastic. And there's quite a bit of fantastic covers in Series 2000. Tim Jacobus was cooking his ass off with uh, Series 2000. He was whipping it up in the kitchen. Gordon Ramsay out here putting out a lot of amazing artwork for the series. So yeah, and of course, it's a cover ranking. It has nothing to do with the books, strictly off of the cover of the book. <clears throat> so this is gonna be a laid back video. Hopefully it goes by pretty fast. I'm not gonna try to spend too much time, but you never know. When you're talking about all things horror, when you're talking about goosebumps, something near and dear to our hearts, it can sometimes take longer, but I'll try to speed through it, just keep it brief. I'm to do a recharge. Let's get into the ranking. So number 24 on my Series 2000 cover ranking starts off with The Mummy Walks. The Mummy Walks is the only cover in Series 2000 I consider kind of bad. You just got this awkward looking mummy. He's like in this weird pose. He's got his foot sticking out as if he's about to like stomp on you. The Mummy Walks, you get it. The cover background is very bland, just sort of like a couple of dark rocks in the background. It's just a wonky looking cover. I always thought the mummy looked sort of goofy. He's like, looks like he's damn near sleepwalking. That's how I look at like 2 a.m. at night getting a bowl of Captain Crunch. Um, he just looks really goofy. Just sort of looks like he's stumbling around. Just isn't really that impressive of a cover. And uh, yeah, that's only the one I consider kind of bad. Not the worst thing ever, but eh, it's all right. Number 23 on my list is Cry of the Cat. Cry of the Cat is a very basic sort of cover. Just the image of Rip the Cat, you know, a cat with gray, blue, whatever fur. He's got detailed yellow eyes. He's got the drool coming out of his fangs that are snarling. Again, I'm not gonna be talking about the artwork, like in terms of the quality of it. Quality is always great, but just the artwork itself. It's a very basic cat image. Not really much else to say. Book is fantastic though, but the cover, meh. So that's number 23. Number 22 is Slappy's Nightmare. Now there's a few things I like about this cover. I like the uh, sheep in the background of like the blanket and the pillow. Um, I like um, Slappy's bloodshot eyes. I like the fact that he's holding up the blanket and he looks really scared, but he looks very goofy in this cover. I think people have obviously said this before. He's got like a big ass head. He's got like a Jimmy Neutron dome going off. If you thought LeBron had a bad hairline, 
Slappy from Nightmare is going to give it a run for its money, all right? I mean, the guy looks really goofy. He's got that Jimmy Neutron head. I don't know how he can even walk around. The head probably consumes like 40% of his body mass. He's breaking physics, but Jimmy Neutron is a scientist. He always breaks physics. Slappy, you're not that smart, bro. You can't be walking around with a big-ass head like that. Pause. So this is a goofy-looking cover. Slappy just sort of looks weird. Um, yeah, I like some parts about it. It's a decent, it's a fine cover, but... He looks a little too cartoony. Number, uh, what is it? See, cause I put, I put 25 because it's 25 books, but actually it should be that. So it's what, uh, I lost track already. 24, 23, 22. Okay, so 21 on my uh, series 2000 ranking is Scream School. Scream School is just this sort of basic looking kid or teenager guy. He's got this like chucky red hair standing up. He looks like one of those troll dolls. Um, he's got like a little bit of skin melting off his face. He's got like one lazy eye and one eye that's like wide open. And uh, he's just at a desk drawing a skull and he got the school background. He looks creepy, but it's just sort of a very basic image. Again, um, nothing really wrong with it. It's just very basic cover, just sort of eh. Not really anything that stands out for me. So yeah, uh, that's Scream School, number 21. Uh, number 20 on my Series 2000 ranking is Revenge R Us. Uh, Revenge R Us is obviously the cover of the iconic crow sticking its wings out and then, you know, calling at the, you know, viewer and it's holding up that newspaper with its talons that says Revenge R Us on it. Uh, again, another fine, decent cover. Um, I like the imagery of the crow. You know, it's cool. I like that it's holding up a newspaper that says Revenge R Us. So a little bit of a step up there, but uh, yeah, not really much else to say. It's an all right cover. I like the pose of the crow. I like the little newspaper headline, but aside from that, again, it's a pretty basic cover. Next one is number 19. This is Fright Camp. Fright Camp is an iconic cover in itself because the cover is comprised of one throwaway sentence in the book. There's one throwaway sentence about seeing a raccoon in a trash can, and that just sort of made the cover of the book. I don't know why. <laughs> Plenty of things you could have made the cover based off of, but maybe Jacobus didn't want to reveal too much. I don't know. But Fright Camp, you got this raccoon that's sticking its head out of a trash can. It's snarling. It's got these wide eyes. You got this green glow in the background. You got the trash can saying Fright Camp. Got some rotting food in there. And I think some woods in the background. <laughs> um, could be wrong. But Fright Camp, this is a decent to approaching, you know, Slightly good cover. I like the green glow from the trash can. I like how vicious the raccoon looks. But again, it's uh, sort of an, another animal cover. Animal covers never really do much for me. Um, and again, it's based off of a throwaway line. So that one is decent, approaching pretty good. Um, so that's number 19. Number 18 um, on my Series 2000 cover ranking is Full Moon Fever. Full Moon Fever. Um, the cover has the giant moon in the background, much like... <coughs> Invasion of the Body Squeezers and uh, Headless Halloween. Got the big moon in the background. You got some like plain grassy area and you got this werewolf looking creature. It's got like clothes on the bottom half of its body. Got a werewolf head. A basic cover, but I like the design of the werewolf. I like the full moon in the background. I'm a big full moon sucker when it comes to imagery. So you're approaching the, again, decent to pretty good covers. Uh, full moon fever is number 18. Um, so yeah. Fairly standard. Uh, number 17 is going to be Creature Teacher. Uh, Creature Teacher, another iconic cover. You obviously got Mrs. Marg basically roaring or screaming at the viewer. You got the background of the clip, uh, the bulletin board, I mean, blackboard, whatever. Um, and you got the desk. And obviously, she looks a lot like, I don't know, like Mr. Mortman's like, wife or something. She's got like the bulging, you know, insectoid eyes she's got the giant maw of teeth you got like the rows of like four jagged teeth in the front bottom row is like two you know she's basically snarling and she's got that elongated sort of head um very creepy looking very iconic monster design but the cover is all right again it's just the in your face no pun intended of mrs mark so this i would say is a pretty good cover so i gotta give uh we're approaching that pretty good category now so that's creature teacher number 17. Number 16 is Are You Terrified Yet? 
Are You Terrified Yet's cover. You got the orange background. You got the jar of spiders and the spider that's crawling out of the top has got this like green acidic goo that you assume coming out of its fangs. Looks very creepy, just sort of hunched over and you got all these what looks like dead or turned over spiders in the bottom of the cover at the jar. Um, again, this is a pretty good cover. I like it. Um, not really much else to say. Again, it's just with spiders. Animal covers never do much for me. So again, this is sort of hinting on that. But this is the better of the animal covers and goosebumps. So that's Are You Terrified Yet? Uh, number what am I? 16. Keep losing my place because I ranked it 25 books, but it's 24 covers. So that's number 16. Number 15 on the ranking is uh, Return to Horrorland. Return to Horrorland, another pretty good cover. Um, I would say this is a, actually, you know what? I'll say that this is a good cover. This is now, we're getting into the good category. This is a good cover. Um, you got the roller coaster rides in the background. You got this uh, horror that's like crouching on top of a uh, ice cream stand that says ice cream on it. He's holding out, obviously, the green ice cream cone, telling you to go take a lick, never lick green ice cream cones from strangers people rule number one um i like this one i like the amusement park rides in the background i like the image of the horror crouching on top of the ice cream stand because it reminds me of that one iconic painting that's like um what's that one iconic painting it's like this imp or demon that's like sitting on top of like a woman's chest. She's like in a white gown sitting on top of a woman's chest. If you've ever seen like, if you ever had like a literature class, you see this image pop up. It's like a gothic horror image. Um, and horror here is basically doing that same sort of pose in a more goofy way, but I still like that part of it. So this is a good cover. Um, number, yeah, number 15, Return to Horror Land. Um, so now, Number 14 on my list is Bride of the Living Dummy. Another good cover. You got, obviously, Slappy. He's got his foot over the cake. He's got the suit on, the top hat, looking like Abe Lincoln. You got Mary Ellen, who looks nothing like she does in the book. I think in the book she had, like, what? Like, blonde hair? or No, she didn't have blonde. I don't know. She had, like, brown hair, I think, or something. And she had, like, violet eyes or something. I forgot what she looked like, but she doesn't look like the cover. The cover is very much an homage to, like, the bride of frankenstein so i like that aspect to it and you got them cutting into the cake and the cake is like this pink strawberry cake it's got these images of like um skulls on it it's got like these pink skulls with like flowers in them or like strawberry leaves or whatever um i like it it's a good cover um very iconic one and it's uh it's fun one of the most fun uh series 2000 covers so that's number 14. number 13 is i am your evil twin um, this is another good cover. I Am Your Evil Twin is basically this kid, the main character, Monty. He's smiling, but then the cover of the book shatters as if it's glass. And on the other side of the broken glass is this like gray purplish guy with red eyes. And he's got this gaping mouth. He's like smiling or like laughing his ass off. And he looks like demonic. It's like this demonic looking kid. And then you got obviously Monty. So Half of the broken side that's like, however, half of the glass that wasn't broken is Monty's smiling, innocent face. And then the broken part reveals this, you know, demonic looking kid screaming. So this is a flat out good cover. I like this cover quite a bit. So number 13, I am your evil twin. Uh, number 12, uh, and this might surprise some people because I don't think many people like this cover. But again, it's subjective. Um, number 12 is Earth Geeks Must Go. I actually like the Earth Geeks Must Go cover. I think it's a good cover. Um, I like the spaceship shot. I like the fact that the two glowing orange lights on the spaceship kind of look like eyeballs of some monster. You got the astronaut guy with the red suit on. I like his demonic red eyes, the red glowing eyes that he has in that sinister grin. And it's got Earth in the windshield of the spaceship. This is a good cover. I like the way it's drawn. I like the designs of the spaceship, the Earth in the, you know, windshield view of the spaceship. And uh, I like the glowing red demonic eyes of the astronaut. So number 12 goes to Earth Geeks Must Go. Number 11 goes to Return to Ghost Camp. Return to Ghost Camp, you got the shot of a campfire. You got the camp in the background and the smoke coming up from this campfire creates this like will-o'-wisp 
smoky sort of um, entity. It's like this screaming skull canine creature. It looks like it's like moaning or screaming in pain. It's got these shrunken black pupilless eyes. It's got this maw, this jagged teeth maw, um, and just sort of like reaching out there. Again, it looks like some sort of like ghostly evil canine thing that's coming out from the smoke of the campfire which i think is a pretty good direction for the cover and i like the camp background and stuff so very eerie very creepy um kind of like your good old ghost story stuff so this is another good cover and with that we are now approaching the very good covers so very good covers you got number 11 or not number 11 number 10 number 10 um i think yeah, I think. Number 10, uh, Jekyll and Heidi. Jekyll and Heidi, you got obviously the girl in the background. You got all the broken beakers of the scientific laboratory lab. And you got this, what looks like half pig, half human monster looking person that's got his hand over his face. He's screaming up into the air. You got this like green eye that's poking out. And it looks like, you know, this creature humanoid thing is screaming out in agony you get some good emotion in there and it's a very dramatic gothic looking cover where again just screaming out in pain the girl's scared um quite the ominous one and i like the little opening to reveal the green eyes so it's a very good cover jekyll and heidi number 10 number nine goes to be afraid be very afraid you got sparkles the dragon giant huge dragon taking up the cover you got these giant orange furnace eyes you got this gaping mouth of jagged teeth you got the glowing inside of the mouth to indicate it's about to breathe fire it's like stomping on top of like a playground crushing some like swing sets or teeter-totters or something and you got like a school in a background i love the design of sparkles the dragon very cool uh, very awesome. And I like the fact that it's raining down on a playground, like some sort of crazed monster kaiju thing. I like the kaiju feeling of uh, be afraid, be very afraid. So that's number nine. Uh, number eight goes to the haunted car. Haunted car, another great cover. Reminds me again of Stephen King's Buick Gate, Christine, other car stuff that he has. Uh, this car design of the haunted car is amazing. This one is, I think going on here, it's fantastic covers. This is beginning the fantastic covers. I love the design of the haunted car. It's got this like metallic white bluish look that glows looks like a ghost again the haunted car you got these orange cat eyes you got the front of it with these like metal fangs that are sticking out of the front you got these tusks that stick out on the other side of it it just looks again like a monster car if you had monster house this is monster car um and i love the blue eyes white dragon color scheme the blue eyes white buick um, cover. Uh, this is a fantastic cover. I love the design of it. And I love the woods in the background, driving on the, you know, road, freeway, highway, or whatever. Um, really, really good. Fantastic cover. Number seven goes to The Werewolf in the Living Room. Another iconic cover. You've got this fearsome looking werewolf. It's got, again, the all orange eyes. It's got the jagged fangs. It's got like pieces of its skin missing. It looks like it's like a zombie werewolf. And I love that zombie werewolf design. It's got a suit on. I like rocking the suit. It's got a suit that's like ripped up in places and it's on the couch, feet out, just playing the remote with the TV. Very iconic, very cool. It's weird in a great way. It's a really weird, great cover. And again, I love the zombie decrepit werewolf design. I like the suit. It's got a lot of flair to it. Very iconic, um, fantastic cover. Number six on my list is brain juice another iconic one you got the very detailed picture of the brain the vein sticking out of it and this bluey well purplish gunk that's being poured over it splattering out it's very much odd for a tim jacobus cover there's no real cover that's like this it's easily the most unique goosebumps cover out there um, and again, really iconic. There's a reason why this was in a lot of promotional material for a series 2000. It's very vivid, very disgusting, very odd, but fun at the same time. So again, another Jacobus Michelin star meal of a cover. Number five on my list is Ghost in the Mirror. Very eerie picture of a room, very dark, very dingy. You got this mirror that looks like a, a portal to another realm. It's again got that bluish, ghostly, eerie glow. And you got this decrepit, 
and what looks like a demon hand sticking out of it and reaching out. Very creepy, very eerie. That image of that, you know, monstrous demon looking hand coming out of this portal or the mirror ready to come for you in your dark bedroom. Very scary, very ominous. And I love that cover. It's fantastic. So that's number five. Number four, getting into the absolute Hall of Fame covers, is uh, Headless Halloween. Headless Halloween is fantastic. You've got this kid with no head. He's holding up this green goblin. It's like an homage to like the green goblin. He's holding up like this green goblin looking mask, monstrous looking face. It's got like this green decrepit rotting face. It's got these giant humongous orange eyes. You got the other hand gripping a jack-o'-lantern in the middle of the pumpkin field. You got the full moon in the background in the night sky. Fantastic stuff. It looks awesome. It looks scary. It looks freaky as shit. Um, I love that cover. So that's uh, number four. Number three is Horrors of the Black Ring. Horrors of the Black Ring is one of my favorite covers of all time. I love the jewelry in the background and just this ominous black diamond gem of a ring and inside is this horrific looking face it looks like the face you see in the insidious movies you know the demon from insidious it kind of looks like that it looks like a demon from the insidious movies just staring out of there wide eyes red rotted face you know it just looks really creepy and that face being inside of this black abyss like you know black diamond ring or whatever amongst this pile of jewelry or treasure or whatever um i really dig it it's a fantastic cover easily one of the best goosebumps covers of all time so that's my number three number two attack of the graveyard ghouls attack of the graveyard ghouls another fantastic cover you got these rotting looking zombies these ghoul zombies coming out from the grave one's got its eyeball hanging out the other one's like reaching over with a monstrous you know gaping mouth you know towards the viewer it looks like they're crawling out of the grave from behind the tombstone and coming after you so very, very scary, uh, very horrific, and I like some of the body horror and the imagery in that one. I heard the book is not. I heard the book itself is nothing like that cover. Cover's a little clickbait, but we're just judging off the cover. So, absolutely fantastic. Easily, I would say top five, top four best covers of all time in Goosebumps. So amazing. And finally, my favorite cover in series two thousand. You can guess what it is by this point. It's. The Invasion of the Body Squeezers, two books put into one, the giant cover. This, in my opinion, is my favorite Goosebumps cover of all time. It's Jacobus' best work. You got these raining asteroids coming down with these, you know, amphibious looking body squeezer aliens clinging onto it. They got that lily pad head. They got those orange, you know, frog or like, I don't know, like scopal looking eyes. They got that vicious mouth of like giant fangs and jagged teeth. And as these asteroids are coming down, they're clinging to them as they're landing on Earth. And they're like flaming asteroids coming down. You got this humongous full moon and then you got a miniature moon. You got the full moon and then you got a miniature moon that's orbiting the full moon. And then you got the suburb. You got this one giant body squeezer that's standing up and it's reaching towards the viewer coming towards you. You got a dog that's biting onto its leg. Again, you see how cool the designs are. This very amphibious killer frog looking design. And and then you got one at the bottom who's crawling towards these kids, grabbing one and the other kid is screaming. Um, this is an amazing cover. This is a 10 out of 10. Perfect cover. I love this cover so much. This is Jacobus's best work, Michelin star meal. There's only one other cover that I think I may rival in terms of me liking it, but that's going to be saved for another video. You guys probably already know what it is, but another ranking for the future. But yeah, Invasion of the Body Squeezers, the best cover. That's my Series 2000 cover ranking. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button down below and hit that like button as well. I'd really appreciate it. We hit 300 subscribers. Let's keep the momentum going. Let's keep climbing. Let's get this channel to keep growing because it helps the content get out there. It helps you guys get some fun material you can enjoy. I always want to cover stuff that feels like, you know, you're talking to a friend. You meet a homie that likes the same things as you. Hopefully you guys feel the same way about my videos and subscribing and liking and commenting down below helps get the video into the algorithm and uh, definitely makes people tune in. So hopefully do that. I also got an Instagram account, same title as my YouTube channel, The Horror Tavern. 
go follow that or check it out if you let if you are on instagram or if you want to support me and uh, that's all i have for today once again thank you so much for 300 subscribers you guys are all fantastic and stay cool stay classy and uh, get ready for more content to come this summer as i have a lot of more things to review rank and discuss deuces 300 baby Woo! and i missed the recording button but rick flair again whoa